So welcome to the fourth Open Air Connect community call. I'm Alessia Bardi, I'm a researcher in computer science and uh, scholarly communication at the uh, Italian National Research Council. And I'm the service manager for the Connect Services, uh, an open air service that uh, allows research communities and uh, organizations to promote and better implement open science practices in the community. Uh, so the past community calls were somehow reserved to community creators. So those people that, uh, those people that already um, have a connect gateway. Uh, today we did an open, uh, an open call for all those that would be interested in to uh, have a new uh, connect gateway. So uh, today, let's say the the agenda is a little bit different than usual. Uh, so I will go through uh, an introduction to the service and what can be done for uh, for you and for your communities. I will briefly go to uh, a couple of uh, highlights and novelties we are working at. And then I will give the floor to uh, Yvonne Desmond from the uh, Technological University Dublin that will present uh, how uh, the Connect Gateway was used by the EUT Plus uh, Alliance. And then clearly we have some time at the end for questions and answers to address uh, everything that uh, you will ask. So let's start uh, from the beginning from Connect. So uh, was the problem that we would like to address is that we realized that due to the publication in data deluge, uh, the research communities, single researchers, but also citizens and organizations find it very difficult to uh, discover the research productions that are useful for, for their needs, both in terms of, for example, data discovery for doing their research, uh, but also for um, having indicators about their performance and the impact that uh, the organization have on, um, on the research landscape. And in Europe, uh, we can find almost 20% of all the higher education institutions in the world. And they tend to form alliances, so to form groups of universities that work together for uh, creating more knowledge, for um, improving their, um, their organizations and the, and the learning paths for their, um, for their students and for their researchers. Um, and, this, and we think that this is a very important uh, activities that they are doing. So they need tools. So they need tools to discover, to assess, and to outreach their research findings. And uh, how can they do this? Typically, they would like to have a portal, a personalized portal for their research communities, for their researchers, for their, um, for their audience, so that they can really uh, show to the world, to the stakeholders, to the funders, to, to everyone involved, what they are doing, what the researchers are doing, and uh, also find um, a way to make it more apparent and not to uh, hide it behind um, a wall. The problem is that uh, it's not easy to put in a single place all the research outputs that are relevant for a community. So how, because, because research products, publications, data, software, and also other types of research products like protocols, methods uh, in, that are created by researchers and we use by the researchers are scattered in different places. 
So they are available from different repositories or data archives, um, um, and it's not easy to, to find them. So we need infrastructure. We need an infrastructure that aggregates research works of specific interest um, and put them all together. Uh, but this requires time, resources, um, and expertise at different levels because there, there are several challenges that need to be uh, tackled in order to do that. And uh, I can mention uh, four, so the heterogeneity, so the fact that the different repositories where these research works are hosted uh, uh, may have different, um, may be compliant to different protocols. So uh, you have to uh, build a system that is able to collect from all these different places uh, the metadata about the research products. And, and they are a lot, as I said, the publication deluge. So you have to deal with big data, both in terms of numbers, but also in terms of structure, because uh, the description of a publication is probably very different from the description of a protocol uh, or of a data set. Uh, then the quality and accuracy and completeness. There is not one place where all the information is available. You have to integrate. So you may want to have information about the authors, for example, from ORCID, which is a registry for, uh, for researchers. Uh, you may want to have the, the links uh, between publications and data sets from another service. And so you, you need to have the expertise in order to put all these things together and create a, a rich uh, information space in which you can have portals for the discovery and also uh, portals for uh, statistics and uh, monitor indicators. The good news is that Open Air can tackle those challenges for you. Open Air is already uh, operating an infrastructure that does that. So thanks to this infrastructure, we are uh, collecting metadata about research products of different types from uh, more than um, 2000 scholarly communication sources. And we are talking here about uh, institutional repositories, thematic repositories, funder databases, uh, authoritative registries like Open Door, Retrie Data, um, ROAR for the organization, uh, but we also have Crossref and Datasite, which are the, the main uh, persistent identifier um, authorities that are used. So by collecting all this information, we put everything together and, um, and we further enrich the information that we collected by finding duplicates because we may collect um, different metadata description of the same product from different repositories. So we identify that these two records describe the same thing and we put them together and we keep information about the provenance of each piece of information that we, uh, that we merge, let's say. And we also have uh, algorithms that uh, analyze the metadata and the full text of open access publications in order to extract additional information that is not explicitly available in the metadata. So for example, citations or um, links to data sets, links to software and um, subject classification, for example. Then the result of this work is the opener graph where all these different entities, so software, publications, data, organizations, uh, data sources are linked together. Uh, and the numbers are pretty impressive. So we're talking about 160 million publications, 58 research, uh, million research data and, and so on. Um, so what 
how can it be useful for a research community or for a university alliance? Uh, we need to find a way to identify from the graph, the slice, the part that is relevant for, uh, for the alliance or for the research community. And once we identify the slice that is relevant, then we can build customized portal on top of it. And this is exactly what Open Air Connect does. And in addition to the portal, you can consider Connect as a facilitator of open science practices. In fact, this is integrated with other scholarly communication services like ORCID, Crossref, Usage Counts, but also other open air services like Zenodo and, uh, and Explorer. The thing is that in this case, you do, not, you do not have to build the infrastructure for the aggregation and processing of the data. You don't have to uh, think about the maintenance and operation of machines that are needed to run the portal or to implement the, the search facilities because everything is operated by OpenAI. So the installation, maintenance, uh, upgrades, uh, of the machines and, and the services, uh, regular backups, and the automatic data updates are all operated by, by OpenAI. So how does it work? Basically, with Connect, you, uh, we deliver a gateway. And as I said, we need to identify uh, the slice of the graph that is relevant for you. For this, the gateway offers an administration interface uh, with which you can basically provide a configuration. So the criteria of uh, inclusion. These criteria are applied to the graph and uh, they are used in order to tag the research products that are relevant for you. And based on this, we have uh, an end user portal with discovery facility functionality. And we also publish the, the metadata records in uh, a dedicated uh, data set on Zenodo so that you can also get the metadata and build your own portal if you want, or build uh, additional, I mean, other added value service if you want. And clearly it's also available via the uh, OpenAir API. So the uh, configuration criteria are um, very important because they identify the subset of the open air graph uh, that will be searchable in your gateway. And we can do this in different ways. And uh, different criteria are more useful for a specific type of, uh, of communities. So for example, if you're are a discipline specific communities, then uh, the keywords uh, are a very important criteria. So you can select, for example, uh, all the research products that have, um, I don't know, digital humanities among the subjects in the metadata. Uh, then we have the projects and with projects, we mean uh, the project grants, so the, the, the fundings. So you can basically select from the 25 funders integrated in open air. Uh, we have 3 million projects and you can select uh, which are the grants that whose publications, whose deliverables, whose reports, whose data sets you want to include in your gateway. Then clearly we have the data sources. So thematic repositories, archives, journals, but most important for uh, university alliances is the fact that we have the institutional repositories. So a gateway curator can say uh, that all the uh, research products that are available from the repositories of my universities should be included in the gateway. And then similar to that, we have the Zenodo communities and finally, the organizations. Why it's very important, especially for um, university alliances? Because 
sometimes researchers uh, do not uh, deposit their publications, their research products where they should, but they do add uh, their affiliations in the metadata or in the full text. So OpenAir can extract the affiliation from the full text and uh, in such a way you do not only get everything that is in your institutional repository, but also everything that is affiliated with your institution. So it's like that the picture, uh, the, the record of your uh, organization is, uh, is as much complete uh, as possible. Then there is also an option for end users of the portal to add uh, missing products in the gateway. So you can uh, basically link products that are already available in open air, but also products that are not yet in open air, but they are available from Crossref, Datasite and Orchid. And they can also add links to uh, other research products and to um, project rents, so in order to uh, grow the record of your community. Then we have the uh, open air algorithms. So I already mentioned the full text mining algorithm that finds the links to projects, affiliations, and document classification, but we also have an algorithm that propagates uh, the fact that something is relevant for your community to its related items. So for example, if a publication is relevant for your community and is supplemented by a data set, then also the data set is added to your community. So with Connect, what you will get? You will get an administration dashboard to configure the gateway, not only in terms of the uh, inclusion criteria, but also in terms of look and feel. And you don't need code if you don't want. If you want, you can write a little bit of HTML to make your page a little bit uh, nicer according to your needs. But if you don't want, there is uh, what you see, what you get uh, administration panel where you can actually do everything you need. And you will also get the portal where the users can search for any types of research works. They can, uh, they can browse with the filters on the left. They can find the right place to deposit. So if there, is, if there are any uh, um, community specific uh, Zenodo communities to use or any institutional or thematic repositories to use, and as I said, they can link uh, research products uh, among them and with funding projects. So the idea is that uh, you can contact us. We understand which are your needs and we tell you what we can do. And we sign a memorandum of understanding. So we agree on what it needs to be done <laughs> in order to support your community. We create a first version of the gateway and you have sign curators that will manage the gateway and will provide the configuration. And then we can support with the public launch. So we can uh, help you uh, deliver, a, let's say a final version of the, of the gateway that can be, pub can be publicly launched and we support with the communication and dissemination activities. Specifically for the university alliances, uh, we think there are three actions that are very important uh, to do. So the first one is to ensure that the repositories of the universities are in open air. This means that they, the repositories must expose their metadata records according to the open air guidelines, and they can register to the content provider dashboard of open air in order to uh, validate their metadata records and to provide the, all the information that we need in order to uh, harvest this information from them. We need also universities to check if their organization is properly represented in open air. So for this, um, you can go 
in our Discover Gen General Discovery Portal Open Air Explorer and search for your organization. It could be the case that you will find duplicates or you will find um, a wrong names. So these are all things that come um, from the information that we collect, but we, we have, we do have a curation tool that basically uh, we can use in order to uh, curate all these details. So names, uh, URLs and uh, merge two organizations together if they're the same or split them if they are not. And yes, clearly the action tree is to find uh, internally on, on the side of the Alliance who are the gateway curators. So this is a matter of policies. Uh, currently, uh, we give uh, Connect uh, for free because it's funded by a project, uh, which is Open Air Nexus. Uh, we need some time for the delivery, about uh, one month, more or less, for the first phase. And the project will end soon. So if you're interested, uh, I think uh, it's a good idea to, uh, to ask us for, for a gateway in order to bootstrap the process. But in addition to that, uh, we also have monitor. Because in some cases, you also want to monitor the impact uh, in the research landscape. You want to have indicators about the open science uptake, so sorry, the uptake of open science practices in your community. And uh, with Monitor, you can have basically a, a dashboard uh, with different types of visualizations, charts, numbers that, um, uh, I'd say that, that monitor different aspects that can range from the, uh, uh, the, the number of open access publications to the APCs uh, of the organizations or, um, or are the indicators related to the collaboration with other organizations. And you can keep it public, restricted uh, as, you, as you wish. So there is, uh, it's a powerful tool. So very briefly, the novelties I would like to present you today, uh, they are related to uh, the inclusion criteria. So the, the part of the configuration where curators specify which are the criteria by which a research product is relevant for the community or not. So we, are, um, we have added on, on beta, the selection criteria based on fields of science and sustainable development goals, um, and also the advanced criteria. What does it mean? Is that for now, all the criteria I mentioned before, they, they are not related to each other. Uh, but now you can, for example, say that not only I want everything whose subject is United States, uh, but in fact, I want the subjects to be United States and Mexico, or I want to have a subject that is um, I don't know, digital humanities and the contributors is uh, Daria, which is a digital infrastructure for um, digital humanities, in fact. So you will see uh, soon uh, these two options uh, in your gateway in the production environment. We are finalizing some, some details uh, before adding to production. And with this, I think um, I can leave the floor to Yvonne uh, okay. for the presentation about uh, EUT+. Um, hello, everybody. I'm just going to share my screen. Yes, I will start mine. Yeah. Yes. I hope everybody can see that. Yes, we can oh, see good. it, but it's not yet in. Oh, okay, now it is in presentation. Oh, great. Um, well, thank you very much for the invitation to come and share our experience with you. 
um, which I have to say has been a very positive one. So just to explain what the European University of Technology is, um, it's basically an EU funded project to create um, one technological university for Europe. Um, as, as you can see, there are eight partners, all technological universities, and you can actually see the scale of the project just by looking at the, um, the numbers that are involved. Initially funded for three years, which will end in October, we were told that we had to produce very concrete evidence of project of progress in order to get um, funding for next year, for the next phase. So um, it's been a very practical kind of project to work on. So the proposal includes the ambition that the EUT plus would be an open university. Um, this was largely driven by TU Dublin, which thinks this is an ambition everybody should have. But work package 8.6.7 had two specific deliverables. One was to create the institutional repository for the EUT plus, and the second was to create an online open access academic press. And naturally enough, we were to do this without any money, which is pretty standard. Um, we had, a, there were about 36 people in the work package, but we had a core of 12 people who were mostly librarians. And I would say, if you want something to happen, definitely include librarians in your work package. Um, the first thing we did was do a landscape survey of the Alliance members um, to see what the status of open research was. Um, it varied a lot. Um, some of the universities were very advanced in this area, some of them were not, and some were literally at, at point zero. Um, all but one of the universities had an institutional repository already. And so the subgroup was established and they were given the task that given that we had repositories already, we just had to find a way of putting um, an interface on top of those um, and find some way to accommodate the one um, university that didn't have a repository. So we took three approaches. One was to build a portal from scratch, which was impossible because we had neither the personnel nor the money. Um, we were, could look for a hosted solution because TU Dublin, for example, uses digital commons. Um, but again, we had no money. And then we found open air. Um, which rapidly became the only solution given our lack of resources and time. So we then contacted Open Air with a request to develop the portal. Um, we signed a memorandum of understanding um, in September 21. Um, I think you can't underestimate um, the market value of this for us. Um, as you can see, this was the pre press release. And they were really excited that we had something to show um, that was concrete, that we were moving forward, we were all work working together. And they also um, made a commitment um, that we were moving to open scholarship, which is something I have used to my advantage since. So it was a very big deal for the EUT plus that we had done this. So we were then moving on to build the EUT branded web space. Um, and have as a node of community for the university that didn't have a repository already. So it was the first tangible expression of the EUT Plus as an entity. Um, it showcased the diversity and talent within the EUT Plus. This is really very important for technological universities as opposed to more traditional universities because a lot of our material that is high impact is not necessarily um, the peer reviewed literature. So we need, we need a showcase to put everything that we do out there as most of our research tends to be applied. And um, it actually happened very fast. We were operational at the end of November. And I have to say the delay was mostly our side because the um, universities had to look at the state of their repository in open air. And I think it's also important to mention that we did not have huge technical support our end. We were basically librarians with some technical knowledge, but not a lot. And um, Open Air did all the, the heavy work for us really in this instance. So this is how it looks. It's very simple. I think it's quite elegant. At the bottom of the screen, I couldn't fit it onto my page. All the university logos are displayed together. Um, so I think it was a really, a really good job that happened very quickly. 
So, um, as I say, we kept it very simple. The feedback was really positive. Everybody got quite excited um, because when you look at it aggregated, there's quite a lot of material coming from the eight, univer eight universities. Um, the subgroup worked really well together, which is amazing given you know the diversity in languages and approaches and all the rest. But everybody was sort of committed to the idea, felt it was really important and um, worked quite hard to make it happen. Um, as a, a leader of the work package, I was very relieved because I felt it was sustainable and it was simple and intuitive to use, which is really important. There were problems. Um, making the repositories compatible with the open air requirements um, took a lot of work. We had difficulty with the different versions, like we have been harvested for op by open air for years. But we discovered we were on version three and didn't know that there was a version five, so that was a problem. Um, working with the help desk can be slow and you do require a little bit of patience, understandable given the, the volume of what they had to, to do. In the initial stage, we weren't really clear what had to be done by us, but that did become apparent over the time. My biggest problem is the delay in updating the IR. It's currently you know, 12 weeks, which I think is, is far, too, far too long, and um, I've been assured that that will be worked on. And the big disappointment was one university did not take up the Zenodo option as they didn't have the resources, they said. So the statistics were really, really welcomed because they were coming from an independent source. Um, the funders' information was very useful. As again, it showed the, the diversity of funding that existed within the EUT. Um, we're delighted that the SDGs are coming because SDGs are really important for technological universities as we all work to a number of them. It highlighted the diversity of research communities. We thought we were really bad on data, but yet when we aggregated, we had oh, you know, nearly 1,500 data sets. Um, again, given the whole trust of the EUT+, plus, this was really important. It was psychologically very important that we could demonstrate all this evidence. Um, we then um, started looking at the open air services. So the monitor is now on the EUT plus repository and TU Dublin has put it on our own. Both are open. Um, we dearly love the visualizations. And you have to remember that this is really hard to collect data for the, for the seven universities. So it's really good. For example, these are my favorite ones. Um, I love the one on the right, which just shows the publications rising. Um, the next one is the openness over time. We're very keen on the green route um, and we want to keep demonstrating, demonstrating that the green is possible. You don't always have to be paying APCs. Um, this, like I was just, when I was putting together this, this presentation, I was looking at the stats and this one is alarming me greatly because there's a lot of material without a license. So for example, we have a meeting of the EUT next week and this will be highlighted because people need to clean this up. Um, the published versus deposited, again, we're very happy with the, the green um, being very prominent. And this again is very, very useful information when it comes to demonstrating the importance and the impact of um, openness to the sometimes quite cynical um, university presidents and rectors. So um, all in all, um, I would have to say it's been a really successful partnership from our point of view. We couldn't have achieved what we have achieved without open air. I think updating is a problem, which I'd like to see um, sorted. Um, sometimes the communication is not too clear or it's too technical, uh, which can, it's a problem our end. We don't understand sometimes what people are actually saying to us. I think the documentation could be a little bit clearer. So you should be told exactly what you need to do. Um, you need to be on the latest version for open air compliance. And again, you need to know that. Like, I, I don't know what we thought was happening. We just thought everything was upgraded, but obviously that's not, not the case. And TU Dublin uses proprietorial software, so we really need a bit more flexibility. But at the moment, um, when we're trying to deal with that, you need to really check that you're being properly harvested. Um, it's become very apparent, particularly in TU Dublin, um, it's not so bad in the EUT plus one, that um, we need to do a great deal of work to make sure that the harvesting is complete and accurate, accurate because that has ramifications for the statistics 
which we really like and which um, are said, for example, my head of research finds really, really useful. I have to say sometimes how the services internet, interconnect is not always very clear. Um, we were told that we should have turned on the usage count service, um, which we didn't know about, and we're still trying to find out how to do. But these are, are kind of minor quibbles. Um, as I say, we couldn't have done it without an open air. Um, we're now very conscious of open air. So for example, again, in TU Dublin, we're going to start using the Argus um, software, which is um, for data management. We're going to roll it out within the technological university sector in Ireland, because um, prior to this, we've all been using GMP online, which is, as you may, may know, is British based. And given Brexit, we kind of feel we shouldn't be doing that anymore. So um, would I recommend using open air if you're trying to do this kind of thing? Yes, I think you need to have very clear conversations in the beginning. Um, but for people like us who just wanted it to happen, but we didn't really want to know how to do it, it has worked extremely well for us. And um, you know, all I can express is the fact that we are very grateful within the EUT Plus because we have managed to produce both our deliverables within a year, which makes us um, best in class. So that's basically what I have to say. So thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions should people want to. I'll just stop sharing my screen now. Oh, thank you very much, Yvonne, for this uh, overview and for the details you share. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly we will uh, address all the all the suggestions that you have in order to improve at, at different levels, both mm -hmm. at the level of communication, uh, which I understand sometimes uh, also myself, I go a little yeah, bit no, too technical. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, you see, you have, to, you have to dumb it all down for people like me. <laughs> Um, but I mean, again, I would say, you know, even given all that, it just required asking the question and then we came to understand, you know what I mean? It's not a, it's not a huge problem. I don't want to make it a huge problem. Um, it's just I think it could be a little clearer, you know, maybe mm -hmm. and maybe some straightforward written documentation that tells you exactly what you need to do. Like turn on this, turn on that, turn on whatever would help. But, you know, as I say, it's a minor quibble, really. I mean, the end result was we got our um, repository in four months, which was incredible. Great. So let's check if there are um, any questions. I see some in the chat. Okay. Davide. Davide Di Church is asking if there is there any timeline for the inclusion of data about citations of research products. Okay, so um, yes, th this information is um, already available in the in the graph, but we we still have to work on the on the visualization uh, on the portal. Uh, but um, I think you're more interested in the in the statistics part. So I know that this is uh, still a work in progress, but I can ask uh, my colleague for an update on this. I really, w I think that the plan is to make it available um, before the end uh, of the Open Air Nexus project, but uh, I really need to check with them. Um, Martin Diaz instead has two questions. So the first one, how can we have a record of the impact of the gateway? In the dashboard, we can't see, or at least I don't know how to see the traffic inside the gateway. So what we are doing is sharing short links to have some data, even if they are linked um, on the gateway traffic. Okay, yes, we are um, monitoring the traffic on the gateways um, via Matomo, PWIC. Uh, but, uh, but the system is, um, is not available for you. So, um, but I agree that 
um, the managers of the gateway should somehow have uh, this information, at least uh, on request. So let me check with the system administrators if we can maybe open the pages of a gateway to a specific user or if I can produce, uh, you know, I can produce maybe an export of uh, of the data that, that you can use. So th thanks for thanks for the question. And the second one, uh, we would also like to see in the dashboard, for example, specific data from certain gateway sources. Okay, so I, I guess uh, you mean in the monitor dashboard uh, to have some charts that are not relevant about everything in the gateway, but only about this subset that is collected from a specific source. Um, I don't think this is in our to-do list for now. but we can evaluate because we have the information. Because for every record that we collect, we know where it comes from, where, where it comes from. And uh, so this is not something technically unfeasible. And I I think I read all the questions in the chat, but if someone would like to, to ask something, add it. Hi, Alexia, thanks a lot. Can you hear me? Uh, sorry, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah, I just need to switch. Um, my question is a more generic one regarding the relationship of the records in the gateways and what happens to them or how they land in the EOSC resource catalog. I'm asking this for very selfish reasons because uh, uh, like at Daria, uh, we received this question relatively often like, okay, uh, we are Daria member institutions. Uh, how do you make sure that our resources land in the EOSC? And for individual data uh, providers, uh, our answer is, of course, through the Open Air Gateway. Uh, but when I make a bit of a like a practical uh, checkup and search for individual records that are in the Open Air Daria Gateway uh, and check them in the EOSC resource catalog. Uh, I cannot always find them, which might be a granularity issue as well, like if the EOSC resource catalog is a catalog of the catalogs. Uh, but so what are your perspectives in this respect? Uh, should we expect that these records will be available in the EOSC resource catalog on the record level or only on the catalog level, if you understand my, my question? Okay, so um, the ESC uh, resource catalog, let's say, is built on top of the open air graph, uh, but not all the research products in open air go there. We make a selection. So um, we try to identify which are the products um, the EOSC products. And currently the, the criteria is that um, the EOSC resource catalog should contain only the records that come from uh, a source, from a data source that is registered as a data source in the EOSC uh, service registry. So, Mm, the thing is that in the in open air and in explore uh, sorry in open air in general and in the gateway for daria for example um, we have more we may have more because it's not only for example the 
uh, research products that we collect from the text grid repository. But it's also more. So, um, so this is why there is this uh, discrepancy and not all the products that you see in the Daria Gateway is available in EOSC. Uh, we should talk with the EOSC uh, team in order to understand if it's possible to update this criteria. So for example, say considering that Daria uh, is an infrastructure that is in EOSC, should everything uh, in, of the Daria Gateway also be in the EOSC resource catalog? Probably yes, probably it should. Uh, but we, we need a to start a conversation with the, uh, with the EOSC uh, team. Uh, this is extremely helpful. Thanks a lot. I feel enlightened now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the question because the connection with the European Open Science Cloud is often uh, uh, not clear, let's say. So, uh, are there any other questions that um, you would like to ask to me, but also to, to Yvonne based on, on our experience? Ciao, Davide, please. Hello. So I have a question. Um, so I know that the project, uh, the Over Open Aire Nexus project will end at the end of June. So I was wondering uh, what will happen uh, next if there are um, any other uh, way in which uh, uh, Open Aire will be still available. I mean, I'm sure that it will be still available, but uh, I don't know if in terms of development on, uh, and uh, about uh, requests, technical request, but the current uh, uh, gateways, what uh, will happen about it? Yes, so before I leave the floor to Julia, <laughs> let me say that you don't have to be worried. We are not going to close the gateway on the 1st of July. No, we're not doing that. What we're doing is that we, we need to start a conversation with you and with all the research infrastructures we have been working with in order to find path to continue these uh, collaborations and uh, to make it sustainable in the long term. And I think this is where Julia can. Thanks, Alessia, and thanks, uh, Davide, for the question. Uh, yes, so um, the gateway will be uh, available till the end of the year uh, in order that uh, we are continuing uh, our conversation and uh, uh, check uh, on the sustainability plan, which means that uh, uh, the gateway may have, uh, uh, will have a price. And this is depending also on the development that uh, you would like to have uh, in uh, your uh, dashboard. So if uh, you are requesting something that it's not, not on our plan for the moment, it may require um, some more development. So anything that you are thinking to make it prettier or to make it more interesting, let us know before June uh, 2023. Uh, if you want a monitor service for your gateway, it's better that we start now uh, and we update the memorandum of understanding that we have already um, in ongoing. And uh, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, uh, I will start sending the mail. Uh, by now I am alone, but probably other people from the team will help me to deal with uh, all the memorandum of understanding and be in touch uh, with all of you. So it's a matter of time, but for sure not before uh, December uh, of this year. Um, uh, Alessia, I have uh, uh, a question for you. Yes. <laughs> um, so um, 
uh, Martin was uh, asking about uh, uh, some specific data about uh, certain uh, sources. Um, with uh, the uh, usage counts, and then uh, with Devon, we will find out how to enable you uh, with the usage count uh, service as well. Um, is it possible to have this kind of information? From no. uh, I, I didn't get the question. Uh... Sorry, it's a uh, I, I jumped a little bit. Okay, so the question is um, if uh, uh, we have from uh, the uh, service that are registered in provide, uh, they have uh, the usage count, would be possible uh, to enable uh, the dashboard or to see some specific data? from uh, the gateway resources. I'm not sure if- uh, Okay. The, the, let's say the, the landing page of each research product in the gateway uh, already shows the usage statistics. If the corresponding repository is activated uh, the service. So this is already integrated. Uh, I think what Martin asked is to be able to see uh, st statistics about a subset of the gateway. Uh, in, his, in his specific case, <laughs> basically what is happening is that the gateway includes a lot of resources that are related to human rights and um, sustainability um, um, and laws. Uh, but he would like to have specific statistics um, about uh, the research products that are available from uh, the Zonal community of his own organization. And we, I mean, that there is a technical issue I'm not going to e explain here, but uh, we could somehow uh, do it by exploiting the information about uh, the source from which we collected records in order to provide the subset. But this is something that probably we need to discuss with the, uh, uh, Leonidas and Joanna, who are my colleagues who are responsible for the, for the monitor dashboard. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm good to know, Martin, that I understood uh, your, your suggestion correctly. Great. Okay, so if there are no other questions, uh, we, are, we have almost finished our time. So I would like to thank you all for being here. Yvonne, thank you very much for your presentation, for your uh, very important input. More than welcome. Thank you. And I wish you a, a lovely day. And if you have questions, if you want to ask for more information, uh, just um, contact me. You can go to connect.openair.eu and you will find uh, a contact form. Uh, so Julia and I will. Uh, we we'll reply, we'll reply you, we can arrange a meeting and we can solve uh, any issues and address any questions you, you might have.